Hi there guys, welcome to episode 12 of the Made of Things podcast. I am your host, Antonio Marie Correa, and uh, this week on the show we have Joe Falco of the awesome Canadian band Fucked Up. But before we get to that, what have I been up to? Well, I've been trying to get away from work for a little while, uh, just hanging out with my family and, you know, having some nice meals at the beach and stuff like that, uh, over here in Portugal, which uh, is packed full of tourists for much more than in previous years, Uh, has been for the whole summer, and apparently it makes a whole difference for everyone over here because it's a topic of conversation. I welcome tourists, so uh, I don't care. Foreigners, please please enjoy our beaches as long as you don't screw them up. So, uh, yeah. But I've been doing that, and I've been also getting interviewed because of this podcast, Made of Things. Uh, last week I recorded an episode of Portuguese podcast Falar Criativo, which means um, talking creative, I guess, with uh, the host uh, Rui Branco. And this is a Portuguese podcast about creativity and creative endeavors and their authors and their backstory and stuff. So this kind of felt like a sort of reveal of myself. This is the first time actually I've ever been interviewed. I think, at least as a lengthy interview, I mean. So if you're curious about my earnest motivations and want to get to learn more about me as a human being in general, and you speak Portuguese, well, you're in luck. This episode will be posted in a few weeks' time on Falar Creativo, so I'll let you know when this happens. I should warn you, though, I pulled a Pete Holmes, which means I went on for three hours and 18 minutes. I know. (laughs) Yeah, well, not exactly a streamlined way of presenting myself, you know, not even as a guest, but since it felt so natural, it didn't really feel strange to me. I mean, I guess some people might be put off that the whole thing lasts for three hours, and I'm not sure anyone knows me, really. So when we finished the podcast, recording the podcast, I uh, asked uh, Rui if the podcast usually ran that long. Apparently, after 98 episodes of his podcast, the longest one before me had been just an hour and 40 minutes. So I guess (laughs) I just have a lot to say, huh? Okay, so also this week, uh, I was interviewed again. So that was twice. You know, once you start, you never stop. So maybe now, yeah, I just assume that I'm going to be interviewed every single day of my life. <laughs> sure, right. Okay, <laughs> who wants that? Uh, um, but, you know, this week I was interviewed again because of Made of Things for an upcoming article on uh, Article. Article, yeah. <laughs> Friend of Frodo Baggins. Um, I was interviewed for an article with the C for P3, which is the online section magazine of culture, culture magazine of the uh, Publico newspaper, which is one of the main uh, newspapers in Portugal and one of the biggest printed newspapers, printed publications. The uh, piece that I was interviewed for is going to be about the recent podcast boom in Portugal that is happening this year. Even though I just called it a boom, I'm not sure I can call that a boom, you know. Uh, It's just uh, what's happening over here is that uh, all of a sudden there's at least a handful of uh, new interesting podcasts from interesting people with uh, interesting ideas, such as I'm going to point out some people I've known for 10 years now. Uh, roughly, you know, more or less, uh, which are hosting shows I should take the chance to recommend, such as Brandos Costumes by Pedro Paulos and uh, Até Tenho Amigos Que São by Rodrigo Nogueira. You know, just, I'm just putting this out there if you're listening to this and you speak Portuguese and you haven't heard those. I'm doing my show in, in English for now whenever I have English guests, so this might make no sense, and you might not be interested in this at all, but, you know, the show is the show, and um, if you want to just just skip to the interview, um, don't, and stick with me. Uh, Okay, sure, do whatever you want, but, you know, the people at uh, uh, P3 uh, saw it fit that I should be included in that category of people, So, you know, I just have to thank them for their interest and my thanks to you uh, as well. 
who are listening to this if you decide to check those out. So uh, I'm starting off the show this week, I guess, with news of plugging myself on other media for your enjoyment. <laughs> well, not really. Uh, plugging myself. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't let that pass. <laughs> I apologize. But uh, anything you can do to get the uh, word out on the show, uh, like talking to your friends about it or sharing the episodes on social media, you can do that through WordPress, you can do that through iTunes, you can do that uh, through Instagram, and you can do that, uh, I think that's it. Oh, on Facebook as well, of course. Uh, Made of Things Pod is the handle. So, you know, I'd be thankful to you forever if you did that. Really. So let me know, okay? Tweet at me and stuff. This episode featuring Jonah Falco of Fucked Up is still a part of what I'm going to call the Primavera Sound section. Can I call it that? I might. Please check previous episodes for coherence and get back to me on all your favorite social media. So this particular interview was recorded on the last night of Primavera Sound in Barcelona this year which is usually and mostly at the Apollo Club, and always features at least two amazing live acts, if not the whole lineup. Uh, this year we had two really rocking shows with the OCs and Fucked Up. And, uh, you know, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Primavera Sound in Barcelona is an absolutely outstanding festival. And uh, usually the most kick-ass nights are not even the main three of the whole thing. Uh, if you can, don't miss out on the previous day and the latter day of the festival. I would call these day zero and day number four, but basically it's Wednesday night and Sunday night, which is kind of tough on some people because, you know, you're traveling and coming from abroad, you know, but I, I'm guessing like 80% of the whole Primavera Sound Festival crowd in Barcelona is a foreigner, which is something that doesn't really happen in Portugal at the Primavera Sound Edition in Porto, but happens, you know, akin to the Alive Festival, which is huge, which if you've gone to and you're a foreigner, you'll know what I'm talking about. But mostly, what I'm talking about at Primavera Sound in Barcelona uh, is the f first night of the festival, if you're going prior to the three nights. This isn't convoluted at all. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're, I'm okay. The, the, uh, okay, you have three days, right? Then you have the previous day and you have the latter day. And those days have shows at the Apollo Club and have shows at the festival site and have shows at the Bart's uh, Club as well. But I'm mostly talking about the shows at the Apollo Club. Okay, so what happened this year was that I got so drunk, I was drinking all day, and I got so drunk that I even uh, missed my flight back to Lisbon the next day. Yeah, um, this uh, was the first time I've ever missed a flight, and uh, it is not a good feeling, and also not good on my wallet either, so I really hope that never happens again, but, um, you know, at least it's telling, you know, that I had a really, really good time, so it's for a good cause and all that. Well, I should say that a few years ago, I interviewed uh, Damien and Sandy of the band Fucked Up, after a show over here in Lisbon, over here at ZDB. Uh, so I already knew that the guys from the band were extremely nice. After the fucked up show uh, in Barcelona this year, they, in the, at the one at the Apollo, Damien uh, left the stage and uh, came into the crowd to basically be the nicest and just talk to everyone. And uh, I got to talk to the guy for, uh, for a minute or so again. He was again extremely nice. So, you know, it was a really awesome show, and as they always are, and I've uh, been a fan of theirs for, for a while now. So, you know, I'm very glad to have on the show this week uh, Jonah Falco, who, again, is another extremely nice guy, uh, especially considering that I fucked up his name and called him Joshua while we were talking. So I know it's ridiculous, but, you know, that's what you get when you've been drinking all day. So, like, since noon or something. So, uh, joining me again on this episode, much like in the Tobias Gesso Jr. episode, is Vera Rodrigues, who has her own show on Portuguese radio Super FM. Now, me and Vera had already been drinking all day, and at dinner as well, with our Pitchfork friend, that I mentioned a couple of episodes back. So, here's a shout-out to him as well. So, Vera and I were already pretty drunk at the time of this interview, and you might be able to tell. Oh, you'll be able to tell, all right. 
pretty much straight away even <laughs> but you know there's no shame uh, so I don't care but you can expect a lot of teasing from me and you can expect me kind of shouting sometimes and uh, also a lot of myself laughing at my own jokes a lot yeah but you know Jonah was extremely cool and went along with all the playfulness of the thing he know he knew he knew he's been around intelligent dude as well and I also really enjoyed this interview, not only because I love the band Fucked Up, you know, not only the earlier stuff, and but also more recent stuff like Year of the Dragon, which is absolutely amazing. You guys should check that out as soon as possible. Also, this was a really, really fun conversation to have, but there's a particular aspect that I'd like to uh, tell you guys, which is I usually prepare my interviews, since I'm not like a buffoon, and... Um, what happened was that like 20 minutes into the episode, I realized that I had uh, asked nothing of what I had planned. I don't think I ever got a question in at any point that I'd written down or memorized or anything. So, um, you know, to me, that's uh, always a good sign of a conversation, uh, recording a conversation, I mean, which means, you know, I'm super into it. I need nothing. And it's just being cool. And I already know what I know. And it's, you know, enough explaining. Okay, so please enjoy the conversation we had with Jonah Falco of the fantastic Fucked Up. Oh, and also starting off with Chaos, I might add. And a lot of possibly confusing, you know, trails of thought on my behalf. And, uh, oh, and me almost ruining my Chelsea Wolf vinyl record, you know, that I just bought. So please enjoy it. Uh, no, I changed my mind. Please, please be the most journalistic you can be. Yeah. You can be. What's it like uh, when you can when you're going to play rock and Rio? Yeah. Uh, well, you know. Uh, oh wait, I, I've got a, a blank. I'm blanking. I'm blanking. Yeah. yeah. Well, you see, the, the thing is, you have to be in the mindset of uh, foreign markets when you, when you are we actually recording. Oh no! Okay. No, we're 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 on. Oh, we're, on. we're on. Okay, cool. When you're, oh fuck! Oh beer! Shit! This is way too wait, much wait, wait. beer. Oh, oh shit! I just died. Wait 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 wait! Clean. We gotta clean this up because this isn't my stuff. Shit! <laughs> 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 oh, uh, do we have to? I just don't want it to go on somebody else's stuff. Oh no! Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Bad responsibility. Hashtag. Wow, this ain't it ain't my stuff. So no, this I, is my stuff. So oh, it's okay. Stuff. Okay. Yeah, sure. You know, you you can uh, totally uh, no. I, actually, it was myself, but you can totally oh, do. Wolf. Yeah. yeah, I know. You can you can uh, you can just like uh, get Chelsea. Wol uh, this is right. Wolf. Guess guess Chelsea get Chelsea wolfed. Get Chelsea wolf. <laughs> or get Chelsea wolf wet. I don't get with beer. Yeah. This does not sound right at all. Okay. You know, <laughs> I don't all know. Right, let's let's start, let's, let's, start let's, let's start over. Let's start over. Let's start over. Let's start over from the beginning, dude. Uh, this is like the, what, second time at Primavera? Third time, I think. Third time. There's actually a bit of debate uh, in the band whether or not it was our third or fourth time, but the general consensus is it's number three. How long did you debate uh, where the truth was? Well, the truth lies within a number of, uh, <laughs> a number of thresholds, but I think that, uh, that, you know, this is like the sort of band disagreement that is present in any group of people, which is that one person says they remember something one way and the other person says they remember something the other way and not only is the person's memory called into question but further than that it's like you individually and selectively decide who's more credible than the other person whose memory is more reliable and the facts start like peppering your decision further and further and further so was this an interruption yes no oh somebody was probably trying to come get their own dressing room but let's keep talking let's keep talking like it's funny because you mentioned like the perception is a funny thing right because um i uh Myself, like I, I seem to switch. Like, the personal perspective I have from this is that, uh, or of this, is that uh, I s some things I remember too vividly, I guess, and other things that seemed like important facts to some other people, like situations and stuff. Uh, situations and stuff, they just. Uh, they just, uh, oh, you don't remember anything, you have a terrible memory, but yeah. that's not true. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, I remember, like, the, the, 
the starting lineup of the Lakers in 92, you know? Right. Like, and I'm Portuguese. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's hardly relevant to me, I right, guess. Right, 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 right. I just remember shit. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, this is the kind of thing, is it like the band experience is generally one where you accumulate a lot of experiences and they all start to blend together and like, it becomes a question of sometimes not, this is going to sound so arrogant, but it... Oh, I hate it already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It becomes a question of not how many, what you've done, but how many times you've done it. And that, and that's not to say that, you know, like, we're incredibly lucky to be able to play Primavera sure. more than once, etc. But, you know, being in a touring band lends itself to this kind of crazy repetition that makes the, the really exciting seem mundane, even though they're always really exciting. So it's like, it's it's really privileged to be able to say, oh, was it three or four times that we've played Primavera Festival? Well, <laughs> oh, who can say? It doesn't really matter. Oh, I don't know. But yeah, mem memory's a funny thing. Like, you choose what you want to remember. And like, you know, we, we often try and reflect on the band and put these little lists together because it's sort of fun to try and look back at the existence of your band. Uh, and like, so many times have I been the best, right? Well, yeah, well, somebody <laughs> asked me, like, what's your sure. top ten funny memories of being in, in fucked up and I actually sure. thought I was like I have a lot of funny memories but I can't think of a single one and, and they, they they don't stand out as the kind of thing that I've kept on a top 10 list and they sort of get accessed in these funny little in, interstitial moments so yeah sure. me memory memory of the band is like a huge cloud basically okay sure, yeah. sure. Is, yeah. that, is it all, all together a pleasant cloud or uh, yeah absolutely the yeah. band it, it, you know like there's all sorts of things that go along with being in this particular group of people that makes it like maybe slightly less um, conventional uh, than another band say um, or as far as a group dynamic is concerned uh -huh. but uh, overall I think that we've all experienced a lot of really funny and wonderful things in this band that we wouldn't have done otherwise so I, I would say you know even at my darkest moment I would say it's been a positive experience sure. yeah sure. what is top priority for fucked up because it seems like a very well you know not to be you no know, uh, you know but uh, it seems like to be a very anarchic and also uh, first off democratic and secondly anarchic or first off anarchic and secondly democratic I guess okay. like a, a, a group of people yeah. uh, does it uh, come uh, like what is your first priority as a band like like it's f fully dem democratic I guess well I wouldn't say that it's f it's fully democratic in the sense that we are all participants but in you know the, it's in the same way that democracy is flawed where essentially where all people hate each other the same way yeah no. well <laughs> you know essentially you you no, you elect someone to do your decision making yeah. for you and your your opinions may or may not be reflected so it, sure. you know it's flawed like any democracy uh, and it's anarchic in the sense that I don't think that the priorities and um, you know I don't think that the priorities of the band have been laid out in this sort of manifest in any way but the priority of the band at this point is to just sort of continue existing and to, con to continue making music in, a, in an interesting way and it's like a stupid answer I know to say something as vague as I hate, an I hate the answer yeah but the answer <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah, he's no, nodding I, his head he's just, nodding his head that he hates the answer he's <laughs> got his hands on his eyes he's rubbing yeah. them oh god but uh, that <laughs> no, just, is that is not to, I don't think it's unfair to to want an approach rather than a manifest like I don't think we're setting out to do anything or break any boundaries and the only thing that we've ever set out to do is have an approach that's worth pursuing sure. to music and hopefully those things that seem relevant to us continue to seem relevant to the people that want to consume our music I mean it's like a, believe me this band has already got an ego the size of the city <laughs> So really, where we may be in danger of like really trying the patience, even uh, considering the whole cocaine thing in the, in, in Barcelona. I, the guess. Oh. I, I think there's a lot of cocaine over here. I I don't think I'm even even being prejudiced over here. It's just a fact, I guess. Well, whatever the the, the like connection between ego and cocaine is, I don't think fucked up needs any drug to have like ninety percent. I guess. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Yeah, we're. I would, you know, like the whole point I'm of. Time teasing, I, know, dude. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. How many times did we pull last year if we were fucked up? Oh, that's a great question, actually, because that's something that this is a memory that I will have, because maybe every single day of my life that somebody asks me what band I'm in and I say fucked up, they say, "Well, are you?" Yeah. Or are you fucked up? Oh, this guy's fucked up. So yeah, I think that all those people need to rewrite their jokes. 
but <laughs> no, no, no offense. That's the only thing that's truly gotten old about this band. Uh, I think uh, everybody, everybody is like unfathomably kind to us. Sure. We're such a train wreck, right? We roll in, we're like, sometimes we're six, seven people, sometimes we're ten people. We're so lazy. We never want to sound check. We're not, they would do everything last minute, like, make did sure. You, did you sound check tonight? Absolutely not. <laughs> you know, but everybody is just like, has the utmost courtesy for us, so we're getting away with something, it's, and it's wonderful, so. Uh, so Thank you, universe. So, so. It's, it's funny because uh, Vero asked uh, that, uh, Vero asked that uh, uh, you like the, the, the I've seen you guys twice now at least and I've always been fucked up at fucked up shows oh. so this will be the third time and it seems like we to be yeah, like please, a theme should be, like super sober and super yeah, right. like, controlled and fucked up concert then well, be, like, an I, I'm, I'm gonna like, jump off a bridge can now we just, <laughs> can we just send a message can we just send a message then to, to like the, to the maybe like the production staffs of various venues across the world is that you should be asking the fans, the people in the audience, whether or not they are fucked up. The band can't get fucked up before we play because we just have way too much on the line, you know. It's like a, you can ask people on the show if they are fucked up, like after, you know, yeah. like after, like when they're all hyped. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then everybody gets to shout and the words we'll fucked up. And send it to you. And yeah. then you comment. I don't know. Is, is there some? Yeah, I don't know if I can promise, but is it maybe like is there something that really feels good about shouting the words "I'm fucked up"? Because I don't, I don't think I've, I've said that fit sort of thing before, but it never, never feels good. If you have to utter the phrase "I'm fucked up," it usually means you feel pretty bad. I mean, it's you know, you're like beyond like, fucked up, really. One, two times out of twenty, you're you're giggling and like, oh, pretty fucked up. But <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah. When, you feel, when you feel like the, you know, it should be have like you know a disclaimer uh, as much as you know. Um, some bands have oh please no pictures uh, please no smoking please, please no don't puns. be fucked up please you know? no puns please no puns no please more no puns at all no more puns no no more puns <laughs> puns are the death of everything wordplay is okay though yeah exactly what is the difference between puns and wordplay a great I, deal I think I, 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 I'm not sure I've had this lo lifelong talk, lifelong uh, discussion about this I don't know I don't mean I'm uh, what is your criteria my criteria well wordplay is about the use of language in a, this is about an approach an approach yes. to language and puns is like a convenient measure I think it's like puns like the bottom end of wordplay so let's just say you're really hungry and the only thing you can get is a bag of potato chips That's like the pun. It's totally effective and it'll yes. fill you up a little bit. Yes. But in the end, it leaves you feeling kind of malnourished and wanting For like three to... seconds, right? Yeah, for a real meal. So now yeah. I like tell puns all the time. I'm like, so I think that it's a. Yeah. Especially though, it's fun though, right? I guess so. I, I like yeah. wordplay, but it's, all, it's equally as obnoxious being actually. Effective and being pleasurable? Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Sure. Being effective and being pleasurable or being. Mm, pleasurable, maybe. Are we talk. Uh, we, we're going deep here. This is good. Uh, yes, please. No, no. Uh, <laughs> Or not. If no, 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 yes, please. No, whenever no. possible. Well, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> something like that. Sure. We're on to something. Let's yeah. let's pose the question. Yeah. Let's pose the question to all you listeners and readers out there. Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, have you? Uh, do you know Paul Tompkins? The comedian? Uh, no. PFT. Oh, from Mr. Show and oh, Comedy yeah, Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so uh, I had a th like a two-hour long discussion. We met for three hours and we had uh, like a two-hour conversation about what is wordplay, what is puns. Oh. You know, like I'm I'm for puns because they're special in Portugal. Yeah. And he's like, well, yeah, that's what I'm well, in, 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 in English. It's difficult, you know. But then it's like the criteria is very, you know. It, it, language is very it's something very subjective well, I guess. Well here's the thing about wordplay in English is English is a kind of restrict it can, it's a very expressive language in some ways but it, in terms of wordplay at least North American English doesn't have as many kind of twists and turns that you can have like sure. British English is full of double entendres and, and like other vernacular and, and Portuguese and Italian and Spanish and French and all these other languages have like all sorts of syntactical things you can do to unwind the language and use it in some other way. Like you can actually like pick it apart and rebuild the engine if you want. Whereas no. I feel like in, in, in North American English you really have to get into the dialect territory for wordplay to be super effective and like this is a, the gift of a comedian is to like use wordplay in a sort of clever way without having to be 
a, just a pun. I just I feel like a pun is like the I was like a, a nut, and if you're just one nut, you're not an engine. You might sure. help to fasten it together, but it's that's not going to start the car. Yeah. If you were a musician, like you'd have like the Jeff Dunham puppet, I guess. Not sure. to shit, not to shit talk anyone, but you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what well, you, you know what I mean. Like yeah. a musician, a musician, like I'm a headliner, but I have a puppet. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah kind of, kind of like in terms of art, uh, it would be like the equivalent, I guess, right? I suppose so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know what you can see. Music is interesting too because it's also made of syntax, and you can effectively use wordplay uh -huh. uh, through the use of motif and um, you know, like the repetition of musical cells and putting them forwards and backwards, and you can reference things and you can layer things because. You know, language is sort of a, about an exchange in a way, and you, you can't layer language particularly. It's a, it's a two-dimensional delivery system. Sure. I'm speaking, you're speaking. If we're yeah. speaking at the same time, maybe you can find something on top of it, but it's not really how you use language uh -huh. in the everyday. In the everyday in music, the point is to actually stack things on top of one another to change the meaning of one individual piece. Sure. And that's something that not always, uh, you know, that's something that language does in a linear way or in a chronological way, but not so synchronous uh, the way the music does. Sure, absolutely. Mm. You feel that reflects on your music at all? Like, because there seems to be like a huge, what I said, well, at least, not a huge, but like somewhat of a disconnect between like the full albums and the Zodiac series, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, the, well, the full albums, you know, it's hard to write a full album because you have to, approach not one piece of music but you know 12 or 15 pieces of music as a whole and how they read together I mean in a way that's more like a book or something and if you think about the music you have to sort of have a beginning and an end and you, they have to sort of wash oh. chronologically and individually like uh, so it's like a whole narrative thing yeah I mean I'm not even speaking about anything so specific like you know our, our records aren't written sequenced Sure. You know, our records aren't written with lyrics. Uh, they kind of, right kind of sound like it, though. Yeah, well, of course, there are lyrics. And they, <laughs> no, they, no, they, I mean, but it's, they seem like a whole, like... A, well, no, no. Well, sure, I was going to say, the, the, like the, music, thing, the, music, yeah. the music gets written first, the lyrics get written second. Uh -huh. So, and the, music's get, the music gets written in any old order. Uh -huh. And to put them together is to kind of, like, rearrange and make, for the benefit of the listener, to have, a, a, like, a... Can you rearrange the song if you have, like, a sentence that doesn't fit? Yeah, yeah. sure. So if something is, you know... We, you know, we don't do that at the sequencing point of the record. The songs are done. There's nothing we can do. But in the songwriting, you know, you have to you have to look at it on like it unfolds and unpacks in many many ways. Have you ever seen that short film uh, Powers of Ten by Ray and Charles Eames? Uh, this is like no, I've heard of it though. Nerdy. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's basically yeah. like you go from the smallest molecule to the yes. human beings to outer space to yes. the black hole, and you, it's just like a single camera panning away. Uh -huh. So you have to sort of unpack and sort of exponents with with songwriting I think in some ways you have to sort of look at the smallest cell and then see it as a whole and then see it as a record and then see as it, see it fitting into the rest of what you've recorded uh -huh. especially if you're a band that's been around a long time the Zodiac things are I feel like to get a little less uh, wishy-washy about it <laughs> sure. it's just an opportunity sure. to actually do whatever we want as if fucked up needed an excuse to do whatever we want the Zodiac things are just that you know we take things that even our abstract version of whatever kind of music people think we are Do we you feel angry or like upset at all when people like hit you in a box like you're a hardcore punk no i don't think so i mean it's easy i i don't i don't feel upset or angry by that i think that other as other people it's it's their duty as like torchbearers of these markers yeah. to be upset like People should be angry if they call us a hardcore punk band because what are we, what are we doing that's hardcore punk? It's like a stylistic thing, but it yeah. feels like the, the the light is. I mean, yeah, I, I I feel like we play hardcore punk music in some ways, but like it's like you're the hard, you know, you're the, the black flag of our times, right? Yeah, I don't know about like, that. Like, oh, they're oh, they're they're hardcore punk, but are they really? You know? Yeah. Very sorry, but we have to pick up. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine, sure, sure. Sorry, no, no, no. It's fine, guys, it's, it's okay, it's okay. Um, yeah, I was gonna say that I, I don't... Uh, I mean, pardon the, comp the, 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 the no, you know, no. the comparison, but... No, yeah. no, I mean, no, but like, I don't think that th there's a, like, realistic parallel. Yeah, you need sure. this stuff, too? Um, uh, sure. No, 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 the xylophone thing. Do you guys need this stuff? Yeah. Not mine. 
I don't have a xylophone. I mean, I, I, I wish I carried a xylophone oh, wherever. Oh, but, you know. yeah. <laughs> and the jacket? And the jacket and everything. Are, are you guys set? Thank you. Thank you very much. Cool. Awesome. Please, Jason. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, called, no, it's called Jason. Jason for some reason. That's Joshua. Okay. That's I'm Jonah. Oh shit, I'm sorry. That's okay. You, you know what? I've been drinking since 4, 4 p.m. Yeah, so go. I don't know anything anymore. Yeah, it's good. You're doing, you're doing very well. You seem pretty together. <laughs> yeah, well, for, some, for, for someone who's been drinking for six hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know if we're... The Jonah. Yeah, yeah. Our, <laughs> the black I'm flag. sorry, dude. I'm no, sorry, no, dude. Don't worry, sorry, about sorry. don't worry about it. We get our names confused all the time, actually. Uh, the black... black such, uh, what's the worst, worst, worst case scenario? Like, what's the, the worst? Caked up? Caked up? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> the, 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 I don't know. Uh, the black Funked flag. up? The, Please not. No, no. I, that actually happened, actually. The, See? Uh, I know, right? Um, <laughs> Funked up. There was a misprint on our one of our records, and it said the mother funk us. Oh, shit. That's terrible. <laughs> that is so... The mother, <laughs> the mother funk us. And there, there actually the is a, a band out there called the mother funk us. <laughs> um, so lame. But funk us. But funk. Mother funk us. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> um... The thing about Black Flag uh, is that I think that they were just, just on the record. Just be, just before you go, we go ahead. Like just just to go on the record, we've exchanged like twenty emails by now. So this is all on me, okay. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, and, and I'm actually excellent with names, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you know I'm just no, okay. way out drunk right now. No, you know? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not offended. I'm not offended. Okay. Oh, good, good, good. Uh, so fans, please don't be black and subscribe as, as much yeah, as you yeah. want and hashtag all awesome shit. Black Black Flag. Yeah, it's okay. I'll say this about Black Flag. They they're responsible for like this incredibly intense formative moment yeah. in the like birth of punk music or hardcore punk music and the establishment of like a whole huge important moment in DIY culture they essentially set up the DIY touring network in the United States um, so you know them moving away from what would be considered hardcore punk and us moving away from our like 10th generation version of hardcore punk I don't think is actually comparable I think you can you can sort of put the two side by side and see something similar, but for them, the departure I think is as important as their arrival. It's and like a big box. Well, it's the genre, it's a big box, you know, it's a genre, you're in there, yeah, yeah. but it's a big box, like, like bad brains or something like yeah. that. Well, it's a, you can fit in the same thing, but it's totally different. Yeah, you yeah. Can fit in the same well, well, I just I think that for them, they invented something when they started and they were trying to keep yeah. inventing something when they finished. And we, when we began, we're, we're picking up the pieces of something that had come and gone five times already. Oh, so, so, you're, so you're saying that it's easier for you now then? Well, it's easier for us to seem progressive or to seem oh, like okay. Black Flag because there's already a huge starting point. And I think that, yes, we are we are doing something different whatever uh -huh. to whatever degree you choose to consider that. But um, the opportunity to disrupt the history of music, the way that Black Flag and their contemporaries at that time in the United States and all over the world, like everywhere the simultaneous punk explosion happened. You know, the opportunity to do that in this genre box, uh -huh. which exists, is really fucking difficult. And I think that, you know, we may have made some kind of headway, but it's, uh, no, it's okay. You can come in. He's, he's the OC's tour manager. It's his dressing room, too. Yeah. yeah. The OC's are uh, excellent. Yeah, yeah. That guy... Please go on. Yeah, yeah. Sure. That guy, uh, he's friend of a friend. Oh, too. Okay. So he can come in whenever he wants. Primavera has that film, uh, familiarity, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Familiar yeah. quality, I mean. Anyway, so, yeah, yeah for us to do something sure. uh, revolutionary or whatever, I don't think what we're doing is revolutionary, but I think that it's very... It, if I may be so bold... You may be so bold. ...is progressive. I think so. I'm a huge prog rock fan, though. Yeah. I Are you? I don't. Yeah, I love it, but I don't think that it's prog rock either. I think it's like no, it's it like, isn't. It's yeah, like sure. ego, ego rock. <laughs> That's fuck up sure. is ego rock. We're just like let's just do it because we can, not because. Well, well, if you're ego rock, should you be fucking like nitro or something? Nah, we're our own thing, man. This Michelangelo is Michelangelo Basio or no, something. No, if you, want, you want to be progressive, but at the same time you have the fucked up name, you will never go like. Yeah mainstream because of the fucked up name you're going to be censored yeah well it's a hindrance in some ways but this is the point it's an encouraging hindrance because uh 
you know, you're just you're just left with a glass ceiling. We're in the band, we're popular, but there's only so far you can go with the name Fucked Up. So the thing that you do is you have to spread lengthways rather than vertically. So sure, but it's like the like the mainstream, like the kind of a somewhat opposite of progressive, though. Yeah. Like as far as like you know, anarchic and punk and stuff like that, and then then and then progressive is like the same same the same side two, two sides of the same coin as punk and hardcore goes, right? Yeah. And and our anarchy and just like. The opposite of mainstream, I guess, because no, it's, like, it's like, not a progressive. Does not mean mainstream. Like the Picasso painting that was sold like two weeks ago, yeah, and yeah. then the American television just put on some blur on the nipples of the Picasso painting. Are you fucking kidding me? That's the thing I'm telling you. Know? Sure, but that's not progressive it's though. Thing, and it's it's a good thing, and uh, it should be like mainstream, and everyone should know it. But yeah. when you have like nipples and they get fucked up, name. You get blurred. Yeah. No, of course. Yeah, that's but that's yeah. that's 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 not that's not uh, that's not pro pro being progressive, right? Like well, like progressive means I, we're doing our name is fucked up. Yeah. And, uh, our name is literally well, fucked up, you know, and we're doing whatever we want. You know, I guess. Complaining about the name. No, no, no. Of course. You know what's no, funny? Yeah, obviously, yeah, I am too. I am too. The thing is that if if I in our wildest imagination and the collective imagination of fucked up, I'm sure we'd like to assume that I gotta we gotta wrap this kind of soon because I gotta get back to the hotel. Sure, man. Sorry, course. we're having a nice conversation. Don't get me wrong. I actually I actually planned the whole thing. That we just, just we're just having a convo. Yeah, yeah. This is not even the interview. <laughs> no, it's, uh, actually, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. which is what I want. Yeah, sure. um, uh, we want in our in our. Uh, I speak for everybody. I think that we'd all like to assume that we have had made. Uh, a positive mark or whatever on music. Anybody in a band likes to think that they would. Like you either either feed your own ego and you think I'm popular, this is great, people like me, I'm doing something relevant, or you know, people are blowing all this smoke at us saying you, you're you are relevant, you're strange, you're new, you're bending this, and so it goes to your head a bit. But I, you know, so it would be nice if the legacy of fuck up was like inextricably about progress in music. But truthfully, it'll just be about the the uh, uh, propagation of the phrase fuck and <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, and yeah. someone will just be like, oh yeah, the yeah. fuck band. Yeah, and the, all the other bands with fuck in the word. So either we're going to change censorship laws and there will be nip nipples in the word fuck as far as the eye can see, or or it'll just be, you know, in the realm of the pun. <laughs> sure. So sure. How, that's no, you're never going to be in the realm of the pun no, because I people don't. respect you, you no. know. Hey. He answered his own question. See, he answered his own question. It's not a question, it's a, it's a dialectic. Yeah, 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 you answered it yourself. Look at that. This is, this is like... This is the wrapping up of things. Wow, that was good. While we're on things, like, this is, well, some, some, somewhat, uh, some of what we're doing is for something called Made of Things. Yeah. Just like uh, one, one last minute of, uh, you know, you're, you dedicate yourself to art. Yeah. Because of uh, maybe of something, you know, uh, that changed your whole outlook on everything. And, uh, you know, like what made you dedicate, dedicate yourself to the art of music and uh, like you're made of something, sure. What triggered that, you know? Because for, for, I write for myself, like I listened to Blues Explosions uh, a song uh, once in 96 and I already played guitar. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I need to do this the whole of my, you know, for my whole life, you know? Um, well, I fell into music because I grew up with it around, uh, and I don't know how I fell into punk music. It's like a, kind of an arbitrary decision, but uh, I just am kind of uh, capable, mm -hmm. and so I turned that capability into um, a skill or maybe a talent or whatever, and and I stayed with music. And you know, I've always been really moved by music. I've grown up in a musical family. Both my parents are musicians. They don't play punk music. Sure. Uh, what do they play though? Uh, my father is a piano player. My mother is a saxophone player. They're jazz musicians. Do they have any sort of passion though? Uh, they just loved music too, and I think oh. that you know the interesting thing about them, and. I, uh, I'm sure they'll never read this or listen to it because they're just not so savvy. Right. So I'll talk about them. I'll, if they're I'll, more I'll, private I'll, than I'll that. I'll make sure I send them to uh, yeah, send yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I just think that they both found music uh, 
like they really made something from nothing in their lives when it came to music they took like a really sharp turn in their lives to pursue music and and it changed you know the entire nature of their family history after that and that's like an uh, unbelievably I feel that it's a generous decision to me because I just wouldn't be the same person otherwise and actually you know in the but it's like, like what what is fucking matters like uh, like you being yourself the most you can right yeah well yeah. i just i relate i relate to what i can relate to and i think sure. that the kind of like other otherly communicative aspects of music is uh-huh. something that i'm really interested in and actually they really relate to in the way something makes you feel or the way that uh, a riff or the, uh, a motif or a melody can like be so evocative or remind you of something and speak to you and, and make you think of words i mean this is like language without language uh-huh. and that's you know that's maybe something that i you know that's not the reason i picked up a record in the first the first day i could of course. Sure, of course but that's something that i think that i really have started to realize like how representative of an era of social politics of a uh, time of melodic construction like how much of a, an actual sediment of history uh, music can be and we've really allowed it to become that as a as a as a civilization it's mm-hmm. like it's kind of this now entertainment on the one hand like musicians are entertainers or they're you know they're for you know if a composer has to write a piece of music for the for the king or the sure. court or uh, you know you get hired to play somebody's wedding you're this thing that everybody wants around but is simultaneously devalued uh-huh. and then because you the, never want to be a fucking monkey right well yeah but we're exactly. all we're that anyway well, we feel like we're are not, you though yeah, you of know, course we are some, it's fine. Some people, i don't think I it's i don't think it's such a bad thing to to be aware of the fact that as a musician you're not some sort of precious thing you, you're in a, an incredibly privileged position and you just got to dance you're an entertainer and you've you've chosen to be the most gilded wonderful monkey in the world that's true do you, don't have, you don't think you have a responsibility i have plenty of responsibility i but that's from myself imposing that responsibility i don't think people expect me or anybody else to to do something responsible for them as an entertainer uh-huh. and if you, i mean maybe a small percentage of people it's not a bad thing it, i think I'm like totally um, at peace with the idea that it's my job. I get more out of making this music than the person listening to it gets out of it, maybe. And that is is not selfish, and I don't think that that's a bad equation. I think that the person listening to it can get like an amazing amount. It's art. It's art, maybe, but it's, I'm the one doing it, and I'm the one that's selfishly doing it to feel good. And I get to do it every day, and do it for somebody that enjoys it. So, you know, it's part of it's part of the balance of being a performer. And part of the accept- part of the being a performer is accepting that, right? Yeah, I would yeah. say so. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, so thanks for your time, man. Sorry, this is this sorry awesome. To chop it up. It no, 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 you're not chopping it up. You did, you did like 30 minutes of it. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, dude, whatever you're doing, it's relevant because you're the fucking dragon. Yeah. I've been a fan for five years, and this is the fucking best. Like, well, this is the best I've seen you guys. Oh yeah. yeah. Like, I think we'll, we'll seriously. Probably play it tonight. I did you guys uh, at, C- at CDB as, yeah, as yeah, the yeah. link I sent you with yeah. Damien and Sandy. Yeah, amazing. Uh, five years ago, four and a half yeah, years ago, more or less, and. Years, uh, years of Dragon is possibly my 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 fa- yeah. most favorite thing of you guys. Wow, well, that's guys what I, that's what we like doing is to just do something different. And everybody gets to go, oh, what? Why did they do that? So, and, and, it's, and, and it hopefully sounds good, you know. It's and a, I did like a top ten last year for yeah. a website, and uh, and uh, because it's only al- albums only, and uh, I just found out today that okay, okay, they okay, so they let out, uh, they they launched an album, okay, Years of Dragon last year. And I was, uh, this, we would never count, but still, I was listening, listening to it last night, and I was like, Sh- how do I not know this? This is the fucking best of, they, they, I've, I've, I, I, for me, at least. But please, okay. Okay, so that was it. Thank you to the lovely Jonah Falco for having put up with all that chaos and havoc, you know, and all the jokey teasing and stuff. So, you know, it's all in good fun. Uh, thank you guys for listening to Made of Things. Please subscribe to Made of Things on iTunes and follow on the tweets and Instagrams at Made of Things Pod. Don't forget you can also download the episodes from the Made of Things Pod site on WordPress. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye bye!